Welcome to the Area 51 Iceberg. This will be a deep dive into the mysteries that underlie the secret American Air Force Base called Area 51. This base has grown a lot of attention over the years, being said to have real aliens and spacecrafts behind their heavily guarded gates. This place is heavily monitored. Everywhere you look, there are cameras and people watching, despite being in the middle of nowhere Nevada. It is a very secretive base, so it has a lot of mysteries, and today we'll be going over the scariest and only Area 51 Iceberg. If you guys would like to use this iceberg chart in any way, feel free to, just please give me some credit. Anyways, without any further ado, let's take a look at the sky. It's not too scary up here, being that there's still light. These topics aren't going to be the scariest, but they'll definitely be a good introduction for the scarier ones. NV-375. Another name for this road is called the Extraterrestrial Highway. It is located in Nevada in a desert with minimal civilization. Now this highway is what actually takes you into Area 51, or at least it's like the last known road that gets you as close as possible. The only reason this road is slightly creepy whatsoever is that it goes through this little town called Rachel, or I think that's how you pronounce it. Basically, these people have seen a lot of supposed UFO sightings off of this road. Like I said, it's the only thing that makes this remotely creepy, but basically, it's just a road that takes you near one of the most secretive U.S. Air Force bases ever. 1955. This was the year that Area 51 was officially built. It was never actually acknowledged by the government until 2013, so it ran for 58 years before even being talked about. That is how secret the space is. Because of all the secrecy, we don't really know what actually occurs here besides the testing of aircraft vehicles that will later be mentioned. So yeah, this base has been around for a very long time, and a lot of people theorize that the reason this base ever began in the first place was because of the Cold War with Russia. And it makes sense, the times correlate. So maybe that's why Area 51 exists. And this will be later mentioned when we go over the aircrafts that were actually tested here bathroom break. This occurred during the legendary Area 51 raid. Basically, a group of 75 went to the back gate of Area 51 in Rachel, Nevada, and uh, they were all dressed up in costumes, just standing outside peacefully protesting, blah blah blah. Then one of them had the bright idea to relieve himself on the very gate of Area 51. Now, just mind you, passing this gate, this is the sign that you pass. Basically, you're giving up every right to live anymore because you're gonna be taken down. But this person had the bright idea to just leave themselves on the gate. At the time, this was a very, like, funny experience. It wasn't taken very serious at all, but in reality, it could have turned really bad really fast. If these people actually raided Area 51, they would have been in a lot of trouble and would have been hurt. Now, of course, the person that actually did this got into a bunch of legal trouble, so I wouldn't advise that. Area 51 name. So I, I found this article and it basically has the best theory on this. It was in the Nevada desert near a Salt Lake flat called Groom Lake. No one knows exactly why it's called Area 51, but one theory suggests it came from the proximity to the nearby Nevada nuclear test site. The Nevada test site was divided into number designated areas by the Atomic Energy Commission. The location was already familiar territory for the military as it has served as a World War II aerial gunnery range. So it sounds like this area got its name in the Second World War before this even was Area 51. Just so happened that it worked out pretty well and they just kept the name because that's what it was previously mapped out to be. The tip of the iceberg. Things are gonna start to get slightly more creepy here. It's gonna get colder and darker and just wait. Some of these topics will probably leave you frightened. Area 51 raid. Most of you guys already know about this one so we're not gonna talk about this for too long. Chances are you actually came across one of my videos explaining all of this back in the day. Basically this guy started this event as a complete joke titled Storm Area 51. They can't stop us all. It was just some like Facebook event. As you guys know it gained a lot of attraction which is why we're making this video today nearly two years later. Two million people signed up and um a hundred people actually tried to raid Area 51, and when we say raid, they just kind of stood outside of the gate wearing alien costumes. Wasn't too spectacular, but boy, 
did this make the news? Nothing actually happened here besides the guy that relieved himself on the gate. Everything else went pretty smooth and turned out to be a pretty cool event for those that actually came. Satellite footage. This is a pretty easy one to explain, but it also just doesn't make sense. And you'll see what I mean in a second. Basically, as of right now, you guys could get on Google Earth and view Area 51. If you guys search up the town called Rachel, that's right outside of Area 51 and zoom out just a little, you'll see this Air Force base. So yeah, one of the most secured Air Force bases ever is just easily seen on Google Earth. If you guys don't know, in my last video, I went over a lot of these Google Earth mysteries and how there are a lot of Air Force bases that are completely hidden from Google Earth. Just black dots or white squares. Now, for some reason, this base is not hidden at all and you can see nearly everything. And really, there isn't much to be seen. It just looks like an air base in the middle of nowhere. Which would make sense because what is primarily done here is testing new military aircrafts. So yeah, one of the most secretive Air Force bases ever is actually easily visible from the sky. Now if you really want to go conspiracy theory on me here, you guys could say that that satellite image is fake and that that isn't actually what is going on in Area 51. Area 51 shops. Rachel is the nearest town of Area 51 and they just so happen to have a lot of shops that are Area 51 related. There are definitely a bunch of shops around here but we're gonna be looking at this one specifically called Alien Cowpoke. It's just a gas station but when you're that far away from any other towns, I'm sure this is a place that you will need to stop by on your visit to Area 51. If you guys look at their logo, it is obviously alien themed and their entire store is too. Just look at the fake aliens outside of their gas station or even in their gas station. This is something you definitely would not see at your average gas station. And it's just a little unsettling knowing that you're so close to this area 51. Fake Area 51 invasion. This is basically just referring to all the fake Area 51 raids or how people would fake sneak into Area 51. It's actually kind of messed up to do this because you're basically encouraging kids to try and sneak into Area 51. Those are the people that are actually watching these fake videos anyways. Here's one channel that did this for an example. Coralfish 12G. There's some sort of like fish YouTube channel and Basically in this video, they ran out to Area 51, just like every single YouTuber back in the day. They dressed up in fake military uniforms and somehow snuck in. Seemed very staged and they had to have had some paid actors here, which they could easily do being the channel size that they are. Basically what they did was they snuck into this Area 51 to steal glowing fish. Sounds too good to be true, right? It's a fish YouTube channel and they are literally stealing fish from Area 51. It's so obviously fake, but there are a bunch of others that seem a lot more real. And they make this look fun, when in reality, if you did what they did, you'd end up in jail. Under the surface. Well, you made it. You are officially under the surface. It's gonna start getting a lot darker down here, as the light can't shine through anymore. These topics are gonna become more and more unexplainable and just Weird. Top notch idiots. These are YouTuber prankers that decided to hop on the Area 51 trend, just like all of us. They went to both gates of Area 51, and if you didn't know, yes, there are multiple gates and multiple entrances to Area 51. Some of them are more heavily guarded, but regardless, they're all gonna get you in trouble if you cross the line. They appear to have a lot of real footage, which is kind of confusing. And one of them at the very beginning of this video decided to cross one of the lines at the main gate. As soon as he crossed the line, you could hear the cop sirens go off and supposedly he got into a lot of real trouble and got charged for trespassing. Very shortly after this, they decided to go to the other gate, a mere three hours away. Being that this is like a prank channel, it's really hard to tell what is real or not. But anyways, they went to the other gate and hiked off the road for about three hours until they got here. They tried to climb over this gate that had barbed wire and they were quickly stopped by these camo guys. They were handcuffed and charged for trespassing and supposedly a lot of their footage was deleted. Seems pretty sus, not gonna lie. If you guys just look at this, that it doesn't even seem like something a cop would carry. It literally looks like some Nerf gun. I'm not really too sure what they're doing here. To be fair, it is just private security that are monitoring. So it's kind of hard to tell if this part was staged or not. The actual actor does appear to be scared. He even zooms in on his hands here 
of him shaking to make you know that he's scared. So not really too sure if this was real or fake or what parts are real and what parts are fake. Just overall odd to watch. Dutch YouTubers. So right before the Area 51 raid, these guys had the bright idea to sneak into Area 51. But like, actually. Just before the raid, the security here was hyped up more than ever. So wasn't the best time to do that. With the higher security, they of course got caught. They got three miles deep into the secured base somehow and then got arrested. Supposedly the area that they're hiking through was actually one of these nuclear test sites, which probably isn't gonna be good for their health, but anyways, this is an article that I found that talked about this. The two pleaded guilty to trespassing and illegal parking, both misdemeanors. Nye County District Attorney Chris Arabia said, they were sentenced to a year in jail, but that sentence was suspended and the two spent a total of three days in the county jail if they paid the fine of $2,280 each on Thursday when they were scheduled to be released. A-12. Full name of this is actually the Lockhead A-12. This is some sort of military aircraft that was tested in the Area 51. This was actually one of the reasons Area 51 ever became a thing, and its first flight was in 1962, but was quickly retired in 1968. The crazy part is that this aircraft wasn't even revealed until the 1990s, nearly 20 years later. This was some sort of reconnaissance aircraft built for the CIA, and this was a Mach 3 type aircraft basically just means it was really, really fast. 2,212 miles per hour was its exact top speed, and that is faster than bullets. That being said, this vehicle was being tested here, so it would come in and out, which may be the reason why there are so many alien sightings around this area. Cameras and mics. If you ever actually get the chance to get near Area 51, you're gonna start to see these things everywhere and it's important to know what they look like. These are basically just cameras and mics and they surround the entire area, which is why people can't get across the border. They can't get too far when they have these cameras ready to view anything that moves. As soon as the camera sees something, sure enough, the security will come find you. Basically, the security of this place supposedly have control of these cameras. And if they see something that they can't see themselves, they can use these cameras to hear and see for them. Here are just a few examples. Every time we found real footage of people trying to enter Area 51, this is one of the first things that they notice. These things are literally everywhere, and if you go there and show your face, you're probably gonna get into some trouble, because you're gonna be documented committing this crime. The middle. Well, congratulations. You've made it halfway down the Area 51 iceberg. Things are getting really dark now. There's minimal light peeking through, Things are just becoming unexplainable. Pac-Man. This is a very odd shape near the small town just outside of Area 51 called Rachel. I have not found any information on this that actually confirms what it is, but from the research that I've done, it appears to be some sort of agricultural setup. Being that they are in the desert after all, you don't see a lot of green plants because there's an obvious lack of water to supply plants. So that is just one more thing that makes this just slightly more weird. All of these little shapes are all in a circular pattern and they all have different shapes, but then there's this one that just looks like Pac-Man. So hear me out here. These plants have to be watered, being that they're in a desert. So that requires some sort of watering system. If you guys are ever driving through the middle of Kansas, you'll probably see these giant machines and they're used to water all their crops. These machines like to move in circular patterns, so they will basically be pinned in the center and just do a giant circle. And that could explain why there are so many green circles in the middle of Nevada. They could just be crops that are being watered in the circular pattern to keep growing. Now, why this one is shaped like Pac-Man, not too sure, but maybe there's some sort of obstacle that is not letting this watering machine actually go across the entire circle. Maybe it has to stop for that little slice. There are so many weird shapes out here, it's just very peculiar, but this was one of the interesting things that I found. U-2. 
Very similar to the H-12, this is a reconnaissance aircraft for the CIA, of course. Most of the testing of this aircraft took place in Area 51, which again is one of the main reasons it exists in the first place. It's a bit older than the H-12 and was flown in 1955. Only 104 of these were actually built, which was a lot more than the H-12 itself. This was mostly used during the Cold War with Russia, just like the H-12, and the top speed of this aircraft was 500 miles per hour definitely a bit slower than the H-12. But this aircraft could fly at heights of 600,000 feet, which was about twice as high as commercial airplanes back then. This is why it was a reconnaissance airplane. It was able to stay up and out of the way, and people wouldn't even know it was there. This is probably why a lot of the UFO sightings in Area 51 exist. It's because people are seeing these unfamiliar airplanes flying through the area and at unexplainable heights. White Bus. This is one of the vehicles you're likely to see if you ever visit near the Area of 51. The people who work at Area 51 have to have some way to get to and from work. So they have this giant white bus that travels back and forth to get people into the base and out of the base. Seems pretty simple, but when researching this, I found a very odd video. This YouTube channel, Explore With Us, decided to visit Area 51, just like everyone before the raid. They never went in because they were actually smart enough to know that if they did, they'd get charged for trespassing, unlike some people. But on one of these long, dusty roads near Area 51, they came across this bus. And sure enough, it was the white bus that everyone talks about. They tailgated them for a long period of time, so they sped up. They weren't too sure what to do because the road was so narrow it wasn't meant for two people to pass. After some time of them recording the bus and not knowing what to do, the bus decided to pass them and almost ran them off of the very road itself. This was very scary for them, they weren't too sure what to do and they are already going a pretty fast pace and this bus decided it just had to pass them. The bus driver was obviously not happy that they were there, and he wanted to make sure they knew that. As soon as this happened, the YouTuber group decided to get out the area as fast as possible. They were actually in the process of doing some sort of 24-hour challenge, but when this happened, they got so freaked out, they just left. The reason they left was because in the past, when they had contact like this with people in the base, the camo guys would actually come take their footage away from them and destroy it. So they wanted to get out of there with this footage of the white bus nearly driving them off of the road. Anyways, these camo dudes will be explained in just a little. Just wait. Unmarked airplanes. If you're in the Las Vegas airport, you might actually get to see one of these planes that I'm going to talk about here. This is what they look like, and they're basically just unmarked airplanes. Being that this is the closest big airport to Area 51, this is how people probably travel in and out of the base. At least the people who aren't willing to drive that far. The planes look pretty normal, just no logo. Only a red stripe on the side. Not something you would exactly commonly see at an airport. This is just another way that this base stays so secretive. That the people coming in and out don't even take their own vehicles. They all come in either through the plane or the white bus. Camo dudes. This is a term for the people who guard Area 51. They're not exactly military like you would expect, they kind of just dress like it. But they're private security, or at least that's what I found from the research that I've done. They dress up in this camo uniform and they all look the exact same. You actually can see them in a lot of videos of people trying to get into Area 51, or people that get close and then get turned around by these guards. In this clip with the top-notch idiots, you can see these guys a few times appear and they follow and watch anything that comes near the site. These guys have been known to stop people and destroy SD cards that recorded them or something they should have never seen. Their one job is to sit around all day and wait for people to cross the border. They probably get really bored, so when someone finally does decide to trespass, they're excited to finally get the action after a long day of nothing. These guys are ruthless, and they get straight to the point. And if you see them, I suggest running the other way, the darkness. Well, you're just one step closer to the very last level of this iceberg. But for now, enjoy the darkness where there is minimal light and things become just slightly more unexplainable. Aliens. So we don't know much about Area 51, but 
What America has decided to state about this unknown military base is that the United States is hiding aliens here. With the lack of knowledge, we don't really know what goes on here exactly, but we have a few theories. In the small town of Rachel, citizens have had unexplainable experiences. They've seen a lot of things. They've seen aliens and UFO sightings, and it's the only way they can describe the things they see out there. In the middle of nowhere. There's a bunch of pictures of supposed UFOs, but they're all about as blurry as every Sasquatch photo you would ever see. Most of these alien encounters are assumed to just be people seeing the testing of new military aircraft, for example the U-2 or the A-12 back in the 1950s and 60s. Something to keep in mind, these were tested 20 years before they were ever even announced or talked about by the government. So what if they're testing stuff now with our current technology? that won't be explained for another 20 years. I mean, just imagine what aircrafts that we could make now if we could make planes that long ago that could travel the speed of a bullet. White trucks. So all the camo dudes drive these white trucks around. They used to drive these white rams, but now they drive these white Ford Raptors, which are way more expensive. And if you didn't know, they're pretty awesome. Every single thing these guys use to travel appears to be white. Their trucks, the bus, and even the planes. They're all white. But back to the actual white trucks, these are very expensive. The average Ford Raptor starts at about $65,000. This isn't just a normal truck. These are designed to be able to catch up to you, no matter where you are driving. And being that you're in the desert and off-roading, these vehicles are made to catch up to you, no matter where you are. If you go near Area 51, I guarantee you, you'll see these trucks near the road. And these are exactly what the camo dudes drive. If you're close enough to Area 51, you can begin to see these everywhere, possibly using these cameras and mics to spy on you no matter how far away you are. They've been known to chase people out of the area and destroy any footage that people have recorded of Area 51. The white truck is the last thing that you guys would want to see if you're anywhere near Area 51. Time travel. This is one of those theories of what goes on in Area 51. This all started with Bob Lazar, who was allegedly hired as some reverse engineer of extraterrestrial technology. He worked in an area in Area 51 called S-4, which was even more secretive than Area 51 itself. He claimed that he worked on an alien aircraft that was ran by some antimatter reactor powered by Element 115. Sounds familiar if you guys played Call of Duty Zombies, being that this Element 115 was what created the zombie apocalypse in the first place. He later claimed that the US government was working on time travel here, and supposedly they acknowledged the time travel existence, but they thought it was too dangerous to actually test on any further. This was all alleged. Nevada nuclear test. Now this is all facts, it's not alleged like some of the other topics. Nuclear weapons were tested here and all around here actually. This is partly how we believe Area 51 got its name in the first place. Basically pre-World War II, the government made all of these test sites and they did a ton of nuclear testing here. Whether all these areas were actually tested on, we don't know, but this is some of the best information I found on Wikipedia. November 1951, nuclear test at Nevada test site. Operation Buster Jangle Dog. It had a yield of 21 kilotons of TNT, 88 TJ, and was the first US nuclear field exercise conducted with live troops maneuvering on land. Troops shown are six miles away from the blast. Kind of scary knowing that we have launched some of the largest weapons in existence in our very own country in Nevada. Which is why Area 51 is so creepy. There's so many things like this that have gone on. So many tests that just aren't talked about. The abyss. Well, welcome to the utter abyss. Down here, things are very, very dark. There is no more light and the topics are unexplainable and terrifying. That being said, let's take a look at our first topic, weather control. Now we're definitely getting into some of the conspiracy theories here, but Basically, it was believed that the United States government was testing weather control in Area 51. You may wonder why this is even considered to be a theory, and well, the Cold War might explain some of this. 
Along with the worry of nuclear war, people believe that Russia and the United States were creating tech to control weather to use Mother Nature as a great weapon. A lot of these theories came from 2005 when there were an astronomical number of tropical storms in the US, but the reason that it was so creepy was that the placement of these storms was almost perfect, taking out a ton of oil rigs all along the United States and the Gulf of Mexico. What Culture has a really good video on this topic, but he said that one example of this being used by the government could be just giving the president a nice sunny day for a speech, but a rainy day for protest against the government. This is definitely a reach, but could this be why the base is so secretive? Hybrids. There are theories that in Area 51 they're doing genetic engineering to create alien hybrids, or basically superhumans. Allegedly, this is being done to create a new world order. Very similar to the Captain Marvel movies where these hybrids basically get snuck into the government and slowly work to overthrow it, it's the same theory. People believe that these hybrids are doing the exact same thing, and they live among us and just seem normal. But they aren't normal. They have special abilities like telekinesis that could be used for government tests or hijacking other governments. Sounds like something the US might want to do, especially during the previous Cold War. Along with all the alien sightings here, this is a real theory. It may just be what is happening behind those closed gates in Area 51. So there you have it, the first ever Area 51 iceberg. Some of the scariest theories of what's going on behind the closed gates of Area 51 in the American Air Force Base. These are all just theories, but some of these topics are very real and scary. And the fact that the base is so mysterious and that anything that goes on here is not even recognized by the government until 20 years later just makes it that more scary. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like and subscribe. And if you want more iceberg content like this, check out my channel because we have several videos out just like this. Anyways, that is it for the Area 51 Iceberg.